from like SKJK up to grade five, I would just I would just get in trouble because that's the alternative to reading a book in front of the class or doing work in front of everyone. Not being able to or read has eroded my self-esteem. I often thought if you can't read, what are you supposed to do in life? What job can you get because everything involves reading and I think other people think this too if you can't read you must be stupid. We know that words become worlds and that when children and adults can read fluently and comprehend what they read they're more likely to be productive and healthy individually and make communities and societies stronger and more resilient. It's time for change. The Right to Read Public Inquiry into Human Rights Issues Affecting Students with Reading Disabilities. Learning to read is not a privilege. It is a basic and essential human right. When this right is denied, the impacts can last a lifetime. In October 2019, the Ontario Human Rights Commission launched a public inquiry into human rights issues that affect students with reading disabilities in Ontario's public education system. The goal was to assess whether Ontario is using evidence-based approaches to meet students' right to read. The OHRC heard from thousands of students, parents, teachers, educators and professionals through surveys, public hearings, engagements with First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities, artwork, emails, meetings and telephone calls. The OHRC also received documents, data, and information from eight representative English language school boards, all 13 English language public faculties of education in Ontario, and the Ministry of Education. And the findings were very concerning. Every student needs to be taught to read. Students with reading disabilities are not the only ones at risk for not learning to read. Also at risk of being left behind are students with other disabilities, students from low-income homes, black and indigenous students, students who are newcomers, and English language learners. As president of the PAO, I speak on behalf of Ontario's 1,400 pediatricians. This is one of our top five priorities, literacy. And um, we want to advocate, as all of you, for evidence-based reading programs to be administered in all of Ontario's schools. We know that early adversity, poverty, and the social influences of health play a major role in learning and development and health outcomes. The most disadvantaged families can't afford to pay privately for testing or tutoring. The right to read inquiry is therefore one of the essential components necessary to bring about health and education equity and an equitable society. When children suffer, families suffer and the society suffers. I do not have an opportunity to receive a formal education. When my son was born in 2006, I was very happy that he would attend school in Canada, where education is a human right. I did not think I would have to fight so hard for these rights to be realized. When looking at curriculum and instruction, the inquiry found that the current curriculum and approach to teaching reading in Ontario is not working for students with reading disabilities and many others. It is not consistent with what decades of scientific research has proven works for teaching every student to read. I have my specialist in special education, yet was still not equipped to teach the children in front of me to read. Having my own children with dyslexia made me truly understand how ill-equipped I was. However, I have to say that most of Darcy's teachers and my colleagues truly really want to help and care deeply about their students, but we are stretched thin, we are not supported, and we are not trained effectively. I have lots and lots of kids in my classroom every day and I get to teach every last one of them how to read because I'm using a structured literacy program in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> Key recommendations to meet the right to read are that Ontario must immediately adopt a new kindergarten program and grades 1 to 8 language curriculum that includes direct and systematic instruction in foundational reading skills, such as phonemic awareness, phonics, and reading words accurately and quickly. Ontario must also train current and future teachers on evidence-based approaches to teaching students to read. 
When looking at early screening of all students, the inquiry found that not all students are screened for risk of reading difficulties. And when screening does happen, the tools used are not evidence-based. This results in delays in identifying students who need intervention. By the time they are identified, students are years behind. When we brought our concerns to the teachers, we always heard, he's a boy, he's a December baby, he will catch up. He never did. From JK to grade three, our concerns were never taken seriously, despite the fact that he still struggled with reading, math, and writing. To meet the right to read, key recommendations are that Ontario must begin screening every student at least twice a year from kindergarten to grade two using universal evidence-based screening tools and use this screening to identify students who need reading interventions. When looking at reading interventions, the inquiry found that many students who need reading interventions aren't getting them or are getting them too late. Many interventions used in Ontario are not effective for students with reading disabilities. Mostly in grade six, I, rem I remember that they'd put me in this class with all these other students and they would practice reading with us and stuff, but like, Nothing would really stick. They would actually teach us like learning tricks to read better. Key recommendations are that to meet the right to read, Ontario must stop using non-evidence-based reading interventions, standardize and provide stable funding for evidence-based reading interventions, and make access to interventions equitable and universal for all students. When looking at accommodations, the inquiry found that approaches like relying on assistive technology are often being used as a substitute for teaching students to read. And often when students do need accommodations, there are barriers to access. I truly believe that Hudson's teachers want to accommodate him. They just don't know how or they don't have the ability to do so. Similarly, there's a lack of understanding on how to accommodate. Once or twice, I've been sent to the office for insisting that I need to use my technology. I spent lots of time in elementary school not doing my work, but how could I? I couldn't read or write. Key recommendations are that to meet the right to read, Ontario must provide and support timely and effective accommodation and provide greater access to evidence-based software and assistive technology. When looking at professional assessments, the inquiry found problematic and inconsistent criteria and long wait lists for professional assessments. Direct instruction in foundational reading skills, early screening, and evidence-based interventions will reduce the need for professional assessments, but when they are needed, they should be timely and accessible to everyone. And because Kate was only in grade two, we would have to wait another year to put her on the wait list. And that wait list was two years long. So Kate would not get assessed until grade five. And that's when our teacher told us that if we had the money to afford the three to $5,000 to get a private assessment, we needed to do that and do that right away. A key recommendation is that to meet the right to read, Ontario must improve access to assessments and ensure greater transparency in the assessment process. I would like to end my presentation with a story from when I was a grade 11 co-op student at an elementary school. I was assigned to help a student who was struggling with her reading every day for 10 to 15 minutes during class with an iPad. Halfway through one of our readings, the student turned to me upset and said, I hate reading, it makes me feel stupid. It broke my heart as a student. I saw myself and feel the way I did when I was her age nine years prior. I know I can't change my past. I can only move forward and be as positive as possible. But I'm hopeful there will be a change for an open and helpful future with our school boards. It's time for change. For inquiry findings and the full list of recommendations, see the Right to Read Inquiry Report on the OHRC website at ohrc.on.ca.